Unit 3, Cell Cycle Part 2. In this uh, video, we'll be looking at the ins and outs of the cell cycle. Here is a great picture of the cell cycle. I know this says interface at the top, but just draw your attention to the entire cycle. Note a few things. This is a cycle in that the end and the beginning are tied together. And so <coughs> this shows these two new cells after the cycle is over, but guess what? Each one of those cells is also going to go through a cycle unless there's some sort of problem. And this picture also shows a good proportion between interphase and what is called the M phase or mitotic phase, whereas you have cytokinesis and mitosis. Interphase represents 90% of the cell's life cycle. And so this is oftentimes referred to as the everyday normal life of the cell is doing normal things, making proteins, doing normal functions, whereas mitosis and cytokinesis are more dedicated time toward the division of the cell. Now, in interphase, interphase is divided into three parts. The first part is G1, and the G1 phase, is, again, this is the ordinary, everyday growth of the cell. G can stand for growth, if you like, um, and it stands for gap, actually, but we'll say that it stands for growth. Uh, this is everyday activity, repairing, going on in the cell. Everything's happening normally. The cell is growing because, remember, the cell just finished dividing, and organelles are replicating because there's not as many organelles as there needs to be. This is the normal, everyday life of the cell. There is one important aspect of the G1 phase, and it's called the G1 checkpoint. I'll put a little check mark here because we're going to put some more on this. The G1 checkpoint, and this checkpoint is oftentimes referred to as the point of no return, meaning that if the cell goes through this portion of its life cycle, that cell will finish out the cell cycle and will divide. If it doesn't pass this checkpoint, if it gets to that checkpoint and it just doesn't finish for whatever reason, some cells aren't meant to divide, they're just meant to live and die, then that cell will not continue on to the next phase. And the next phase being S phase, it's important because in S phase, the second part of interphase, the DNA replicates. And so this point of no return represents there's no reason for DNA replicate unless the cell is going to actually divide. And so some cells live out the rest of their days in G1. But some do enter S phase. Again, in S phase, DNA replicates in people. We go from 46 chromosomes per cell to 92. I will show you this picture just to make sure we understand. Chromosomes are only present during cell division. And so the chromatids and the this normal structure that you look like this, uh, normally when I draw it, I'll draw like this X shape like this. This is only present during mitosis. So during S phase, you kind of have the plate of spaghetti look to this structure. But during S phase, the entire genome is replicated. During G2, the, th the third phase of mitosis, this is often called the second growth phase. The organelles and the rest of the cell finishes growing. DNA is checked for errors. And there's another checkpoint in the G2 phase. And it's right here at the end. So the third or the second checkpoint. And this checkpoint represents this idea of, okay, is there enough for the cell to divide? Do we have all the pieces necessary to make two cells? If so, yes, we'll divide. If no, what's missing? and they fill in the blanks. Some cells never make it past this checkpoint. Maybe it's better for the cell to uh, self-destruct instead of trying to fix the error. But in, if it gets past this point, the cell will go on into the next phase, which is called mitosis. Here's a quick look at a cell that's in interphase. Um, the, all these nice, colorful dyes represent some sort of radioactive dye just to show you the different pieces. One thing that I do want to note, this blue structure here, I'll show you the difference in a cell in mitosis. Notice in mitosis, the chromosomes are very plain, these condensed structures here. Whereas in interphase, you still see the blue. The blue represents DNA, but it is all over the cell. There's no 
there's no condensing to it. It's it's all over the place. That's when the cell is in chromatin and or in the uh, DNA is in the chromatin phase. And so, what I want you to see here is that in interphase, the nucleus is still present. You have a very defined nucleus here. That brings us to mitosis. Mitosis is divided into four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. We will quickly go through them here. Prophase is the first phase of mitosis. During prophase, you can immediately see what's going on here. Well, of course, the chromosome or chromatin condenses into chromosomes. The nucleus is gone. The nuclear envelope is broken down, and interestingly enough, the pieces of the nuclear envelope go to form the spindle, and the spindle it is this green or these green structures that you see here. Um, here, here, and you see these really dense areas of spindle. Those are surrounding the structures called centrioles. And you remember centrioles. The centrioles will move toward the poles of the cell, like the north and south pole of our globe. And they will move towards the poles, the spindles will attach, and they will go out, and the spindles will be actually um, charged with bringing things to one side or the other of the cell. <coughs> and again, this is the slide, just a reminder that the mit mitosis is called the division of the nucleus. And so the nucleus goes away, all the pieces of the nucleus go to either side, which is what we're getting ready to look at. The second part of the cell or mitosis is called metaphase in this picture in this cartoon picture you see the uh, chromosomes lining up across the equator of the cell the middle portion of the cell this picture shows that okay it does the chromosomes are really big in this cell but i do want you to see there's a definite line here where you can see the spindles have connected to the chromosomes they're all lined up in the middle and they're getting ready to be pulled apart and that leads us to the next phase, anaphase. Here's a more cartoon drawing of anaphase. Ana means to separate. And so you see these spindles are hooked up to the uh, chromatids, chromosomes, and they're pulling them apart. Sister chromatids are separated. But there is something that happens here that we haven't talked about. I know that you've probably reviewed uh, mitosis several times now in your academic career. But there's a part that you need to know for this for this section and that is it happens during metaphase and anaphase and that is this idea of what do these spindle fibers actually connect to well here's a close-up of a centromere and here's the microtubule or the spindle fiber and there's this little portion of the centromere called the kinetochore I like to think of the kinetochore as kind of like a trailer hitch for a vehicle you hook that rope or you hook a whatever a trailer to the hitch and it carries it around and so in this case the microtubule hooks to that kinetic core and it is able to pull that sister chromatid to one region or the other and so during anaphase those sister chromatids are separated into individual chromosomes at this point remember we talked about how sister chromatids are identical to each other each one represents a portion of the dna of the total genome and so these two here are identical to each other why so that when these cells divide when you have two cells each cell is going to get a full complement of the dna and that leads us to the fourth phase of mitosis which is called telophase or telophase and in telophase the nuclear envelope is rebuilt so the nucleus is going to start reforming. And how many nucleus? Well, two nuclei, they're going to reform. You see one here, and you see one pretty clear here. Also notice what's missing in this picture. The chromosomes are missing. Why? Because chromosomes are going to unravel back to the chromatin state, decondense. And then lastly, there's the formation of this little indentation here called the cleavage furrow and where this is where the cell actually begins to pinch in two and that's the last phase of mitosis what's next well the cell actually has to split in two this act is called cytokinesis this is where the actual cell the cytoplasm cell membrane everything splits in two and you have two brand new cells two new identical daughter cells
Now, real quick on this, plant cells obviously can't pinch into you because they have the cell wall. Here's a picture of an animal cell that's been going through cytokinesis and cleavage furrow. Um, <coughs> we oftentimes see these two-dimensional pictures, but cells are three-dimensional, so this is a great um, picture of that. How do plant cells do that? Well, plant cells do that with the formation of something called a cell plate. And you can see here, you have mitosis, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and during telophase, you have the formation of a new cell wall forming between the two nuclei. And this new cell wall is called the cell plate until, of course, it finishes. And um, think of adding a wall in between two rooms, now, in between one big room. Now you have this two separate rooms. Well, what happens right after mitosis? There's a phase right after mitosis called the G0 phase. And the G0 phase, the cell is basically tired Think of it that way, it's taking a break, and all development stops, all proteins are not being made, and it's just a real, it's a rest period for the cell because of the ton of en energy that needs to be allocated towards dividing the cell. Here's a picture of uh, the of a slide of a cell, and so we'll be using these to to count cells that are in mitosis or an interphase later. I think that it's important to note that when you see something like this, basically when you see a nucleus like this, you will note that those are an interphase. Something like that is in mitosis. One more thing. I did mention the G1 and G2 checkpoints, but I failed to mention the third checkpoint of cell division and that is the M checkpoint is what it's called here. This checkpoint happens during metaphase and what is going on during metaphase. During metaphase the spindle fibers are connecting to those kinetochores. This checkpoint ensures that all kinetochores and spindle fibers are connected. Basically the division or anaphase will not proceed until all spindles are hooked together so that they can completely separate.